Hello and welcome to the Friday, July 28th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Researchers from Wits.io disclosed two vulnerabilities in the Ubuntu implementation of Overlay FS. The Overlay file system is often used in containers. And while this is at its root, a privilege escalation vulnerability, it's still somewhat exciting, even though it's just privilege escalation, because it could affect container payloads and how users running these payloads may be able to then break out into the host after escalating privileges within the container. Overlay file system is often used with containers because it does allow a static base image to be used and then changes to the file system like if you add a file or move something that's being tracked in a second layer so you don't actually modify the underlying file system. But this is exactly sort of where the problem comes in here. One of the features that Linux provides is capabilities. You may have used it, for example, with tools like tcpdump, where you do allow users to use tcpdump to capture network packets, but that's where the only capability that you assign to tcpdump. So that way it's a little bit safer than using, for example, sudo, which is sort of notoriously difficult to manage. The problem with the Ubuntu implementation of overlay file system is that uh, if you are moving a file from the underlying static file system into the user layer of the file system, well, you can actually have these capabilities altered, which then gives the user full root access to the system by essentially just adding all the capabilities to the particular binary. The reason only Ubuntu is affected by this is that there was actually a similar vulnerability a couple years ago in the function that manages capabilities, but Ubuntu made a modification to that particular function, made its own copy of the function, so the patch was never really applied to the Ubuntu version of it, and this is sort of why these new vulnerabilities are specific to Ubuntu and to recent Ubuntu versions. CVE 2023-2640 and CVE 2023-32629 are the CV numbers for these vulnerabilities. Patches are available. So in particular, if you're using OverlayFS, make sure that you apply the patch. And this week I'm teaching our Defending Web Applications class. So it's interesting to see that the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, with its global partners, uh, did publish uh, an advisory calling out insecure direct object reference as something that certainly needs more attention, in particular when it comes to web services like web APIs. They're making some good points here about identifying and preventing these vulnerabilities. I think the real scary part to me always is that this is a vulnerability that we have seen in traditional web applications for yeah at least uh, two, three decades, because as long as these applications exist and developers just don't seem to learn and are now making these same mistakes in newer applications and web services, just thinking that, uh, well, they don't really have to worry about some of these old issues anymore. Other than miscellaneous updates, sort of for the weekend, we do have updates from Sophos for its UTM appliance, fixes a number of vulnerabilities, nothing super critical here. Two interesting vulnerabilities, from OpenSL that OpenSL patched back in February. Also some potential denial of service vulnerabilities here. And finally, a command injection vulnerability in the web admin interface, but it's post authentication. And Aruba did release updates for its access points. Interesting here are three buffer overflow vulnerabilities that are being addressed. These buffer overflow vulnerabilities could be exploited for unauthenticated remote code execution. It does affect the PAPI protocol, which uses UDP port 8211, something that you probably don't really need to expose. But since this does affect 
access points, it may be exposed uh, to users of these access points, which of course may or may not necessarily be trusted. There is a workaround here by enabling cluster security via the cluster security command. Uh, this will prevent these vulnerabilities from being exploited. But this workaround only applies to older versions of instant OS, the Aruba operating systems. For newer devices, Aruba OS 10 and later, this doesn't work. And instead, well, they basically just recommend blocking access to UDP port 8211. You may probably as well upgrade. Well, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. Thanks to everybody who liked the podcast on podcast platforms, left good reviews, and in general sort of helped spread the work. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.